the Fons Vitae Al Ghazali project for children. Fons Vitae has taken on the monumental project of bringing out Ghazali's most celebrated work, the revival of the religious sciences, beloved over the centuries by the entire Muslim world for children. Regarded as the greatest compendium of Islamic spirituality and ethical behavior for everyday life, it lays down practical teachings and explains how the outer aspects of Islam can, through their inner spiritually transformative meanings, change every situation into one which strengthens the innate human nobility of character. The Prophet Muhammad said, I was only sent to perfect good character. It is hoped that in time this will balance, direct, enrich and enliven generations of Muslim children. Al-Ghazali wrote, regarding the purification of both the outward and the inward, that one should know with certitude that the purification of the heart comes through ridding the soul of its vices and reforming it with virtue, and that a person who stops at outward purification alone is like someone who wants to invite a king to his home then busies himself with decorating its front door while leaving the inside full of rubbish and debris. Using the modern English translation of the complete work now underway by a team of scholars, each of the 40 books which make up the Ihya al will be presented in book and workbook form for Muslim children, their parents, and teachers. This aims to establish from the outset of a child's life reflex habits such as humility, patience, love, altruism, gentleness, forbearance, and respect for other faiths while providing children with real and effective tools to address such failings as selfishness, backbiting, arguing, laziness, envy, bragging, hypocrisy, greed, wasting time, and pride. These publications will satisfy a need for authentic, quality guidance for children at a time when their values are being formed. Children need to be raised as spiritual beings who are self-observant and self-correcting. We have seen how four and five-year-old children are drawn to spiritual truths. This project began a few years ago when Sheikh Hamza Yusuf called me in deep distress, worrying about how Islam was often being taught in a narrow, rote, and boring way which does not engage the imagination and the spirit of children, nor attract their enjoyment and love. A literalist or unbalanced understanding of Islam can make the young easy prey for those who might lure them toward radical views. A child needs to be handed back his dignity and his religion in a way that he or she can understand what it is really for and therefore truly desires to consciously keep his or her innate goodness of character intact. And so the project came to be. We would bring out an illustrated version of Ghazali's revival of the religious sciences for children, which would be based on the recent excellent 2011 critical edition of the Ihya by the Dar al Minhaj Press in Jeddah, in which 20 manuscripts from such libraries as Bosnia's Ghazi Huzrav Bey and the Chester Beatty were gathered among other vital features. Mohammed Hussein, who maintains the most complete website on Ghazali, and his wife Valerie Turner, one of the leading editors of Islamic texts, were taken by the majesty and scope of this project. Mohammed began to contract scholars everywhere who are now at work translating all 40 books of the Ihya al -Madin. We are aiming at a translation which is in clear and accessible English so that parents and teachers who will be working with these children will not find the content of the accompanying adult version too difficult to understand. Professor Kenneth Horner Camp accepted the overwhelming task of translating the Book of Knowledge, which is considered to contain the entire Ihya. It is now in its final stage of being polished. Khalid Williams, who lives in Morocco, completed the second book, The Book of Belief, as well as Book Nine, The Remembrances and Supplications. Living in Marrakesh, Abdurrahman Fitzgerald and Fuad Arasmuk have completed translating books three to seven, the books on purity, 
prayer, charity, fasting, and pilgrimage. Also completed our books, 8 through 10, which now all need editing and preparation for the press. Of the remaining 30, there are many underway. Books we have already done, such as Marvels of the Heart, will later be compared and corrected against the Darul Minhaj Arabic edition. In the meantime, work on the illustrated children's books and workbooks has been underway. The first two books are nearly finished. Hamza Yusuf has written the introductions to both the children and adult series. The Book of Knowledge has 40 stories, which are based on the wonderful instruction from Ghazali and on his metaphors, which are ideal for teaching children about spiritual realities. An excerpt from the Book of Knowledge for Children, originally written by Al-Ghazali, now being edited and published by Fons Vitae. Chapter 18, The Ant and the Pen. Let me tell you a story about an ant. But what does this story mean? Why did Imam al-Ghazali write a story about an ant? Excellent question, Abdullah. So let's try to see the hidden secret message sent to us in this story. The children's book one, the book of knowledge, begins by asking, did you know there are two kinds of learning? Besides the practical everyday learning, there is the real special learning, the real learning. And what could that be? Oh, this teaches you how to polish your heart. Did you know that besides your heart that pumps blood around your body, there is the real spiritual heart? It gets dust on it when you do something that is not very thoughtful or good. But why would we need to polish this dust away? Ah, Al-Ghazali is going to explain why and show you exactly how. We have been having drafts of the first two books used in Islamic schools and by families in order to get their feedback. We have also been asking children to illustrate points they have enjoyed. Sometimes each child draws a large heart and places on it different colored dots which represent things he or she wishes to polish away. Children get it and both totally understand and recognize the truths being presented to them. In the Book of Belief, where such concepts as who and what and where is God and what happens to us when we die are discussed, we needed to find a way to present these ideas to children when the story form really won't work. A young man from India named Farooq, living in Abu Dhabi, mentioned how children love to have heroes and suggested they might like the idea of time travel. So we came up with the device of Ghazali appearing through a magic door, visiting the children and answering their questions. So it is our hope that our young children for generations to come will be able to understand that their faith is about the interior process of perfecting one's heart and eliminating base character traits, which accumulate when the true nature of the heart is neglected. At a Fonz Vitae fundraiser for this project a few years ago, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf gave a talk entitled, The Critical Importance of Al-Ghazali for Our Times. You can watch this on the Fonz Vitae YouTube channel. This film went viral, and as a consequence, Muslims everywhere have come forth asking to participate in making this project a reality. He was interested in destroying the idols that our minds generate. He was interested in destroying the idols of the ego. And he actually considered the greatest idol to be the idol of the self. And in that way, he will continue to be relevant for, for all time because he, he set about really to articulate as best he could the way that that could be done. Maha Al Faisal from Saudi Arabia is translating our children's books into an appealing illustrated edition for Arabic-speaking children. Another kind lady from Karachi is translating books one and two at this very moment and their workbooks into Urdu for Afghan refugee children in a settlement near Islamabad, as well as for seven schools for needy Pakistani children. She wrote that besides teaching the Quran and Hadith, I want the meaning and the spirit to be explained to them 
unlike the usual madrasas there, so that it is a lasting source of nourishment for their beings. And a talented Egyptian artist, Farida, has even provided us with comic strips on the life of Al-Ghazali and other topics for the workbooks, which will be fun for the children to read on their own. Another lady from Cairo whom we have never met, Marwa, has sent in a complete set of project activities. What we are experiencing is the coming together of the global Muslim community, enthusiastically endorsing and contributing to this product. The Ghazali project will come out in family sets, each of which will contain the new adult translation for the parent or teacher, along with the children's materials. Included in the children's books will be an index which shows the corresponding page numbers in the adult book from which the ideas being presented were found. In this way, parents can be confident about the source of the ideas in the children's stories. We have really struggled with the illustrations. Most of the books for children that we see today have cartoon-like art, similar to what is used in all the electronic entertainment. We felt this was not appropriate or suitable for the nobility of Ghazali's message and teaching. Therefore, in book one, we have given an illustrator photographs of Muslim children throughout the world to present as beautiful traditional watercolors. The idea is that there is nothing higher or more beautiful than the human image, and also we want children to meet their global brothers and sisters throughout the Ummah. The workbooks are designed to reinforce the ideas the children are learning. They include games which can be played whereby the children actually put into use and practice the virtues they are studying. For Ghazali, it was very important that someone not simply know about and understand needed conduct, but to literally be the kind of example they would wish copied. Everyone, he explains, is a teacher. Book one will contain an instructional DVD which we made while teaching children from ages 6 to 13 at an Islamic school in Kentucky. This DVD shows parents and teachers how the material can be taught even to children who have not yet learned to read. The DVD is illustrated with drawings children from as far away as Dubai and Cairo have been making while using the draft books one and two. In addition to the Ghazali adult and children's versions of the Ihya Alumadeen, we have already published three books to support what is being learned. The first is The Life of Ghazali, illustrated by the award-winning artist Demi. This book has texts for both parents and children so they may read it together. A second book, also illustrated by Demi, is called Painting Heaven, Polishing the Mirror of the Heart, for both parents and children as well. The story is taken from Ghazali's Marvels of the Heart. It tells about a contest between artists, one of whom simply polishes a wall behind the curtain which separates the works being done. When the veil is pulled back, the reflection is more magnificent than the art it reflects because it symbolizes the polished heart, being able to reflect true reality, Allah al-Mafuz. In the back of this book, we have included the relative passages from Book 21 of the Ihya for the parents to read. Lastly, The Boy and the Owl is a story about the attributes of God based on the poem The Creed of Salvation by Muhammad ibn Jafar al-Qattani, who was born in Fez, where he lived and taught most of his life. We have a series of books on the way which are stories for children which will help them better understand such problems as showing off, greed, and being lost in too much entertainment. If there are any among you watching this video who would like to join us as translators, editors, or artists, please be in touch. Thank you.